The Inspector General of Police, IGP Mohamed Adamu, has said that the ban on procession placed by the force is only binding on members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria. According to a statement by the police spokesperson, DCP Frank Mba, the IGP's orders is not binding on non-IMN Muslims marking Ashura. This clarification became necessary just as Muslims mark the commemoration of Ashura throughout the country, along with other Muslims across the world. IGP Ademu said that all other Muslims are free to carry out the annual Ashura procession in line with their faith. He, however, warned that they should do so within the confines of the law. And joining us in the studios to discuss the IMN issue is uh, Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a lawyer and a political analyst. It's good to have you join us once again. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, the, the, the police is saying clearly that some Muslims are allowed to observe an aspect of their religion and some other Muslims are left out because there is a ban on an association that they are um, associated with, permit me to use that word, an umbrella body, IMN. What does this mean in essence? What it means is that if you are identified as IMN, I, I, Islamic Movement of Nigeria, you are not allowed to operate under that name because there's another of court. So in fear of the fact that there's another of court, you cannot come up and say we are acting or we are doing procession in the name of Islamic movement of Nigeria. But if you are acting as a, you are, you, you are out doing your procession as a Muslim, not as I am in. I, that's my interpretation. I think you can go ahead and do your procession. In other words, even members of I, I am in, in as much as they're not acting as I am in, they can as well, as a Muslim, carry out their possession in, in that regard. So I, I, I think uh, there's, a, there's a, a bit of confusion regarding uh, who is actually banned from carrying that possession and who is not banned. Because how do you identify who is an I, I mean, I, I, Islamic, a member of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria and who is an ordinary Muslim that is not a, a, an ordinary, a member of a, a Islamic Movement of Nigeria? I'm wondering, do they in have a badge? Much, do they have something uh, Maybe probably they, they expect that those people who are members of the I mean, will carry their their badge, you carry their, their flag, their, their, their flag and their whatever. And once they see you carrying that kind of flag, they know you are a member of a IMN and therefore you are. So I, I think if, if you, as, as it is today, members of IMN cannot operate as a, for any purpose because there's another of court and they, in ex, I expect that that order should be obeyed. But you know, like I said earlier on, the confusion I have is that even our government who is to be the pioneer of obeying the order, to be in the forefront of showing that orders of court have been obeyed, they, are also, they, are, they often float a court order in the sense that uh, sometimes they give, the reason they give sometimes make me feel somehow, because they, sometimes they will say, because if I pay the order, therefore they are not going to obey it. It is clear, it is law, it is clear under that law that, look, mere appealing of order of a court is not a guarantee, it's not a, it's not a yastic not to obey that uh, order. Should IMN also not say, now that we have appealed the order, we cannot obey the, the order. So it, there will be confusion. So I think I Recently at uh, one of the NBA forums, I think it was last year, the president was your guest and he did say that um, national security is paramount, in fact, takes precedence over law. Fundamental or individual the, rights. Yes. Yeah, that, that has been the first. Yeah, because, you know, you're saying that, you know, there are certain things that the government picks and chooses when it comes to obeying laws. So maybe this might be in the interest of national security and unity, hence the reason why yeah. they pick and choose what laws to obey. I have an opinion that uh, there's no way, even if there, there's no way national interest, national interest, when you talk about national interest, who determined it? National security. Uh, national, national security, who determined national security? If you, are, you say somebody is a national uh, is, 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 is a national risk, a security risk in the country, you take him to court. The court will determine, you put out your facts, and the court will determine whether or not it's actually a national risk. You cannot just on your own sit down in your house and say, this man is a national risk. Otherwise, everybody will be arrested. You can just look at your enemy and say he's a national risk, and you go as national security risk, and you arrest him. So the, it, is, it should be the duty of the court to determine whether or not your acts is a, a, a constitute a national risk or uh, national security risk or not. Not by an individual. I expect it by those who are supposed to obey, uh, to be behind there, uh, ensuring that laws, orders of, uh, laws, laws are being uh, obeyed. So I, 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 am not, I am not in support of that situation, whereby the government will say, in the interest of, like, like in the case of Esakisaki, whereby, the, is it, was it Esakisaki or, the, or, or the, Dasuki? Dasuki. The national, they, they, they refer to the case of uh, 
the Kubo and the federal government, they are two different things. In the Kubo's case, the, there was an argument regarding the case, whether and the federal government presented their case to say we are not going to release him because of this, because of that. And based on that, the court looked at the, the evidence before it and said, look, yes, in front of what is before me, this constitutes a national security, a uh, national risk, security risk, I won't release him. But not, that's not the situation in this case. It, well, it's a conversation that is ongoing. We hopefully uh, will get to the bottom of this. I want to say thank you to you, uh, Tunji Abdulhamid, for speaking with us. Thank you.